We are about to give you the most accurate price predictions for the top 10 altcoins that you need to know about. These price predictions are so insane and so accurate. You can't afford not to watch this entire episode. Welcome to the Bean Pod. This is your place for all things stocks and crypto. From beginner tips to expert picks, use this as fuel for your investing journey. Because when you're in the know, your money will grow. This episode of the Beam Pod is sponsored by BitGet. BitGet is the most user-friendly and secure crypto trading platform for both beginners and experienced traders. BitGet is the best place to not only trade Bitcoin and Ethereum, but also all the small cap gems that we discuss every day. With 24 seven customer support, leverage trading, and a wide array of other advanced features, BitGet sets itself apart from every other centralized exchange. Through Beanstalk's official partnership with BitGet, you'll receive 15% off all trading fees when you sign up using the referral link in the description. All views expressed by speakers on the BeamPod are solely their opinions. You should not treat any opinion expressed on the BeamPod as a specific inducement to make a particular investment or follow a specific strategy, but only as an expression of their opinion. This podcast is for informational purposes only. Welcome to the Bean Pod. This is Shane, aka the Jolly Green Investor. And this is Josh, the Nifty Investor. Today we have a very special episode. We're going to be making extremely accurate price predictions on we where we know that the top 10 altcoins in all of crypto are going. So we don't typically do episodes like this because we're not financial advisors and we don't like to provide these outlandish, you know, you go on Twitter X and you see XRP to a thousand. It's like, that's never going to happen. That's ridiculous. <laughs> At least in this episode, what we've done is we've selected 10 altcoins. Some of, you, some of you might be familiar with them. Some of you, these might be new to you. But what we've done is we try to make a very accurate prediction of where we believe these coins can be over the next one, two, three to five years, depending on your investment horizon. And I believe that these are insane, but they're also extremely accurate when you break down the data. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's one of the most common questions we get in our comments in our discord, you know, Hey, Jolly Nifty, what's your price prediction for this coin? What's your price prediction for this coin? And as you said, you know, we're not like your common crypto quote unquote influencers who are just drawing charts with one line and a gigantic green arrow with no, back. Like, why, where's your thesis for this price? Uh, yeah. You know, where's it coming from? Right? So what you're going to do in, in this episode is take our, our top 10 altcoins, talk about exactly why we have these price theses. You know, we're going to break down some historical data, some trends in comparison to other projects and actually make a case for why these prices seem realistic if the market keeps trending in its current direction. Okay. So who do we want to start with first? Well, I feel like we got to start with BitTensor. All right. So let's just give a quick breakdown of where, I mean, a lot of these this is stats come from. What we're thinking is like, you know, peak bull run price predictions, right? So if we look back to 2021, which was the peak of the last bull run cycle, I just want to throw a few numbers out here, which will give you an idea of where some of these predictions are going to come from. So last time in 2021, we saw Bitcoin, which a Bitcoin itself reached a $1 trillion market cap. ETH was at 500 billion. Sol was at 60 billion. Cardano was at 50 billion. Doge, 27 billion, like Decentraland, 10 billion, right? All, everything in the top 50 was ranked 4 billion and above. Everything in the top 100 was above 1 billion, right? So when you go through some of these coins that we're talking about, that's when you can start to get an idea of where we get these predictions. So BitTensor would be our first one. Right now, BitTensor is ranked as the top, top 25 coin, right? The current price is around $600 at that time of recording, market cap around 4 billion. I think this goes top 10 this cycle. It's the number one AI project. AI is the number one narrative. It's getting investing investment and attention from top <coughs> venture capitalists. It seems to be getting like critical mass on crypto Twitter. It has everything going for it. So so what do you think? Wh what kind of price are you thinking? Okay, so I see it going into, into a top three, just behind Bitcoin, maybe just behind Ethereum, but somewhere in that top three. Mm -hmm. I eventually see it going to like the top three assets globally. Um, when you look at like Microsoft, Google, and all these other things, mm -hmm. I too looked at, you know, all the venture capitalists are pouring in and buying it at market prices at like 250 bucks. I saw when the subnets came online at around a hundred and what that did to the ecosystem. Now we have EVM compatibility, which is coming to BitTensor, which that's going to bring the world of DeFi. We're going to see 52 subnets grow to 1000 subnets. We have tokenomics that follow the exact same principles as Bitcoin. Look with, with all the halvings that are, are going to be occurring. Uh, every uh, every so many blocks, look what happened to Bitcoin. So for me, I look at OpenAI, which has a valuation of 100 billion currently. 
I see at least a two hundred billion dollar valuation for for BitTensor. So I see a price of twelve thousand dollars per token or a twenty X from here. Wow. I like it. That's <laughs> bullish. I think I agree. I think it deserves to be top three. I'm not sure if it can reach top three this cycle. I feel like maybe longer term, mm. but I mean that's it's it's not <coughs> it's not completely outlandish. I had my cur- my price target. I think five thousand dollars is my base case for Tau this bull cycle. My super bullish target is ten thousand. Okay, that puts it around a sixty billion dollar market cap. I don't know if it's going to flip OpenAI just because it, it OpenAI is just so much easier. People know about OpenAI. Everyone knows about ChatGPT, right? I don't know if it'll flip OpenAI that quickly. But yeah, I think five thousand dollar base case for Tau. $10,000 super bullish target, $60 billion market cap. I'm looking for it to be around the top five, top 10 coins this cycle. Yeah. So, if, I mean, if for some of these, I guess you could also look at, maybe it's not this cycle, but if you're going to continue, if this is like your long-term play and you're just going to hold it, stake it, mm-hmm. not even look at it, yeah. then the, yeah, maybe this is like the five to six year mark for right. some of these projects. As yeah. Well. I think most, most of my price targets are like this cycle, <coughs> cool. so like within the next like year or two. Yeah. All right, so let's move on to, you know, another project we obviously talk about a lot. Uh, let's go to from, you know, one of our largest cap holdings to one of our smaller cap holdings in Axendow. All right, we love Axendow, and this is currently has a $30 million market cap, fully diluted 170. Axendow's value lies in its visionary approach where they're integrating real-time s- medical data and bringing it into scientific research, real-time. A lot of the data that we provide to Apple, to Oura Rings, and all these other things, we're not getting rewarded for it. Axendow is not only rewarding us for our data, but it's also contributing to medical research. I look at the global healthcare market, which is $12 trillion. I look at the digital health market, which is $250 billion. I look at the biometric data market, $35 billion. Then I look at the DSI market as a whole, and it is only sitting at $5 billion right now. Yep. That is nothing. Nothing. So what can Axendow do? I mean, they're introducing this new Cure Ring, which is going to compete with our ring. Look at the look at the valuation of our ring. They're doing five hundred million dollars in sales annually with a market cap of two point five billion dollars. Mm. So you can go into your little rant, but for me, I give I give this a five billion dollar market cap valuation. Okay. Which is somewhere around a thirty one X, which yep. puts it at five dollars and twenty seven cents. I'm seeing A plus voice, which detects um Use these use algorithms to t- detect diseases in your body. I see this new cure ring coming out with a physical device. I think this thing's gonna go mainstream, and I'm looking at five billion. Yeah, okay. Like I agree with you 100. percent The value in Axon Dow is their long term vision and all this proprietary technology that they're currently building. You know, we always tell people with Axon Dow, this is no meme coin. This is no get rich quick overnight scam that's gonna pump and dump and go to zero and be gone in three months. This is a long term project, and when you actually see all the things they're working on in the background. You know, you just mentioned this Cure OS plus Cure Ring. Like, they're actually bringing out a smart wearable device that's going to hook in with their AI proprietary DSI platform, which is working to solve real diseases and detect diseases, right? And you're going to be rewarded for wearing this ring. Then you have their potential official partnership with NVIDIA coming up. Then you have potential tier one exchange listings. Like, these guys are putting in so many brick-by-brick groundwork layers for Accident to absolutely explode. And when you look at the current market cap, so not fully diluted, it's 30 million, right? It's tiny. Yeah. And again, going back to, like, what I said at the start of the thing, like, everything in the top 100 was over a billion dollars last cycle. So for me, my price target for market cap for Accident Dow, minimum is 1 billion. So 1 billion market cap would be a 30x of the market cap from current price. But honestly, like when you when you run those numbers for medical, you know, medical um, valuations or ring valuations, decentralized science, how small it is. I think when people really wake up to see that not only is Axon Dow a disruptor in the science, but also AI. And when mm. you see this wearable, people are going to start wearing it. That is a potential to go viral. I think Axon Dow truly has a chance to do another 100x from here, which would put the price around, you know, $15 and a $3 billion market cap. Like, Man, you look at some of the absolute trash coins that had $3 billion market caps last cycle. Yeah. They did nothing. Yeah. These guys are actually s- solving real problems with real products and real people and real partnerships. Like, it doesn't seem that outlandish to me. Yeah, so you, so you see uh, a 3X on top of my current $5 billion fully diluted 30, 30X of $5. Right. Okay. So let's jump into our next one. All right, what do we got? Lock asset. Mm-hmm. This one has a current market cap of $8 million, fully diluted $20 million. Their new CEO, who is responsible for the $2 billion in revenue seen at William Hill. This guy has said, in my 18 years of experience in the gambling industry, I have never observed such rapid month-on-month growth. 
This is an individual coming from one of the biggest betting platforms in the world, yep. generating $2 billion. How does this, how does block assets sit at a current market cap of what it is right now? It's ridiculous. I'd like, are, are people brain dead? We always say it's the most undervalued token in crypto. Man, in these people are brain dead. Okay. <laughs> so I'm looking at, I'm looking at um, how much was wagered in October. $6 million on block bet was rate wagered. Right. They're forecasting $60 million in by March of 2025. So only three or four months out from now. And that's a 10x in terms of what's being wagered. I look at Bet Rivers, DraftKings, FanDuel, all these all these different Web2 betting platforms. They're generating hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue. They have multiple billions in market cap. Mm -hmm. This is a platform that's going to be sharing its revenue with you. You can access it anywhere in the world using VPNs. The, blo the block bet boosters, like yep. how much more in the odds you're receiving. I have a conservative target of 62x which puts that at a $500 million market cap or $3.72. Right. Yeah. Conservative. I like that. So just a quick comparison of, so Block Asset, you know, Axe and Dow, these are two of our absolute small cap gem picks. Axe and Dow, you know, decentralized science. It, there's a little bit more to it. It's a bit more of a technical and like a intellectual pro project. Block Asset, the narrative is so much more straightforward. One, sports betting, gambling, casino. Everybody knows what that is. It doesn't need an explanation. It's very hot. It's worldwide. And sports betting and gambling across the world is growing at an exponential rate as things are legalized, right? Then you have the Solana narrative, right? Block bet and block asset is the number one sports betting casino built on Solana. Solana is the hottest layer one in crypto. So the narrative is very easy. People know names like DraftKings. People know names like FanDuel. A lot of people know names like Rollbit, stake.com, right? Rollbit hit a $1 billion plus market cap at its peak when it was like the talk of the town. Uh, companies like Stake are multi-billion dollar market caps and these are the Web3 versions, right? And then we talk about the Web2 version. These are multi, like DraftKings has a gigantic, these are yeah. publicly traded companies with like 20 plus billion valuations. And as you mentioned, they just onboarded the executives from William Hill. Um, I think the growth that you're seeing in Block Asset, BlockBet was only launched a couple of months ago, the platform. And it is super easy to use. They are adding features every week, every month with insane bonuses, onboarding users. It's so much fun to use. Like we use it every day. It's great. So for me, yeah, I think you got to target 1 billion market cap. This deserves to be in the top 100, I think, when people really start to realize. Um, so that's you're looking at a 50x from current prices, t price target of 350, which was the same as yours, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, but honestly, again, like when you look for a true 100x potential in crypto, Block Asset can do it. To see $7 and $2 billion market cap, that is not crazy. Like when things hit peak bull run, people are going to be looking for real projects built on Solana and Block Asset is by far, you know, along with Otherverse, one of the most legit. Yeah, like I said, this is a, c a conservative 62X. 50 to 100X target on Block yeah. Asset, easy. Like, I, I don't get it. All right, let's jump into another maybe small cap gem that is associated with BitTensor. Yeah, I like it. And so that's Sturdy Finance. Sturdy Finance. So this has been one we've been talking about pretty much all year now. Um, it's uh, It's been on a pretty nice run lately. So let's see, Sturdy Finance, current price around 150, market caps around what, like 7 million? 7 million, yeah. The fully full diluted 160. Yeah, so the fully diluted uh, of Sturdy is quite large because it is a DeFi protocol. So there's a lot of tokens that are locked up for all of the lending, borrowing, but that is just, you know, as you always mentioned, tokenomics are built different for each project, right? Yeah. So just because Sturdy Finance has such a small amount of tokens in circulation doesn't mean they're going to release all these tokens and dump on your ass. That's the same thing as uh, BitTensor. We, yep. You know, all the tokens aren't going to be released for another 50 some odd years. Mm -hmm. So yep. when you go on CoinMarketCap, you see, oh, there's only 5 million tokens, but there's 21 million to be released. It's like, yep. oh, they're going to be dumping on it. It's not like that. So they're all unique. For sure. And so with Sturdy Finance, the case for me is very simple. Without going into the technical side of Sturdy Finance, which is it is the number one DeFi play on BitTensor with smart contracts coming into play, like Sturdy Finance is going to, they're raking in the money. But the, my thesis for valuation is, is very simplified. It's look at what happened to small cap tokens on the hot ecosystem plays for BNB and Solana last bull run cycle. You saw worthless projects that are just happened to be built in BNB and Seoul do 50, 100, 200 Xs. And you know, everything under the sun when these ecosystems really take fire, money just pours into them. Now with BitTensor, it's undoubtedly one of the hottest ecosystems, if not the hottest ecosystem, maybe next to Solana so far in the cycle, it's really becoming the talk of the town. And there just are not that many legit projects building on BitTensor that actually have subnets generating revenue. So for me, Honestly, like if Tau goes to 50, 60, 70 billion, why can't Sturdy go to one, two billion? It seems like a no-brainer to me. So that is, a, that's another 100x. Uh, price target of say 170 to $200, $1 billion market cap. That's sitting right around 100x. And honestly, if things go crazy, I could see Sturdy like going over 100x. It's just such a small cap gem. It's so legit. 
I see Sturdy City as a top 10 BitTensor subnet from an emissions perspective. So, you know, like all the subnets, they receive emissions based off of what they contribute to the ecosystem. And it's in the top 10 right now. They're receiving 140 tau per day, which is equivalent to $30 million per year. They have a current market cap of $7 million. They're generating $30 million <laughs> in tau. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. Again, it's like... I don't know where people's heads are at when they're when they're investing in projects. This is what this type of stuff that I like to look at. Mm. I also look at like total assets that were allocated. They went from zero dollars in August August to over seventy million four months later. It's exponential growth. It's exponential growth, especially with the EVM compatibility compatibility coming. Yep. So let's assume that you know Sturdy receives more emissions because they're a top performing uh, ecosystem project. So they go from one hundred forty emissions per day to like three hundred. Let's also assume the price of Tau goes to 5000 These guys are now generating $300 million a year yeah. <laughs> in Tau. So, you know, this this is an easy, 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 I see it like over a billion dollars in fully diluted market cap. Yeah, so I think my price target, yeah, 175 to 200 for Sturdy, I think, yeah. in full bull. Yeah. All right, let's switch up a little bit. Let's go towards some larger cap tokens. So let's go to Ondo Finance. So this is an interesting one. I mean, it's just been such a steady performer. Uh, quick recap on what Ondo Finance is. It's probably the most and maybe only legitimate RWA tokenizing assets platform out there. They're working directly with BlackRock. Right now, it's sitting at a current price of $0.80, cents, market cap of $1 billion, ranked 66. Uh, personally, I think as the top RWA coin, top a coin associated with BlackRock, who is one of the powerhouses behind this bull run, I think BlackRock can reach the top 25 this cycle. Now, based on those last cycle's numbers, which I discussed at the, at the start of the episode, this should mean that Ondo is sitting at a $20 billion plus market cap. So that means to say the current price is around $0.80, cents, $1 billion market cap. If I think it's going to go to $20 billion market cap, which puts it in line with the last cycle's numbers, that means it's a 20x from here. Price target of Ondo is $20 as the number one real world assets coin. So Ondo Finance, they're engaged in the tokenization of real world assets, particularly focusing on U.S. Treasuries. So the U.S. Treasury market, if you look at it, is, uh, sits around $5.6 trillion. Yep. $5.6 trillion. I like it. On those products provide investor exposure to these assets using their one of their flagship products is OUSG. Yep. BlackRock has literally said that they will be tokenizing everything. Love it. Who works with BlackRock? Ondo. <laughs> <laughs> so my target, assuming that they can capture just 1% of the treasury market, mm -hmm. just 1%, nothing else. I see an easy 10X, yep. putting it to $6.40. However, if they can capture 10% of this treasury market and expand their RWA platform, I see a massive 80X to $64. Wow, I like it. All right, super bullish target there. Let's go to another large cap in Cordao. So Cordao has, you know, we talked about it a while ago. It went on a crazy run from like 60 cents to $4. It's in been in a long accumulation and consolidation period, but my, you know, my confidence in this project has not wavered at all. Cordao is the number one Bitcoin DeFi play. It's the only project that allows customers to stake their Bitcoin non-custodially, custodially, which means that they can hold on to their coins while still staking and generating yield, earning the core token, right? Mm -hmm. And they've worked with Velour, uh, uh, DeFi technologies, bringing out ETPs. They're bringing institutional money into crypto in a very easy way. They got guys like Pomp talking about them, huge players in the industry. Right now, it's sitting at around 95 cents to a dollar. Market cap is 850 million, ranked 75th in crypto. I think Core belongs easily in the top 50. I think it could sniff the top 30. And again, going based on the last cycle's numbers, that puts it around in five to eight billion dollar market cap. So I'm going to give Core Dow a price target of ten dollars, which is a clean 10x from here. Wow. Okay. I went. I went more bullish than that. Okay. So I'm looking a little bit longer term again, though. But so Bitcoin Finance, that doesn't quite exist yet. So you look at. I ran some numbers. Market cap of Ethereum, $315 billion. The DeFi TVL on Ethereum makes up 15%, so $50 billion. The market cap of Bitcoin is $1.4 trillion, with Bitcoin Finance TVL making up 0.1%. That's only $1.4 billion. So pretty much this is an untapped market. Mm. If, we're, if we're looking at 15%, like Ethereum has... For the DeFi side of things, we're looking at two hundred billion dollars in Bitcoin Finance TVL, closer to one point five trillion when Bitcoin eventually reaches ten trillion dollars. Mm. So that's kind of how I ran the math. 
looking at that, I see the TVL increasing over a thousand percent since they've launched this uh, native Bitcoin staking, because this is Cordell is the only place where you can stake your Bitcoin without actually leaving the chain. Bitcoin maxis, that's all that stuff. That's what they're looking for. For sure. So I look at if they can capture 1% of this 10x valuation on Bitcoin, I look at a 52x putting this at $50 per. I core. like it. Yeah. Very nice. They're was, the only project doing it. No, I know. It's, it's a top holding of mine for sure. All right, let's go back to um, maybe a smaller cap and one that's just recently launched in Otherverse. So this is a really interesting one. And I think this is one that bears up some interesting comparisons and valuations. So at the start of the episode, I talked about Decentraland, right? Mana, absolute trash metaverse project. Yeah, it's worse. That got to a $10 billion market cap last cycle. Now, I will say with a caveat that metaverse was quite hot around that time. Like 2021, metaverse was one of the top narratives along with like Plater and stuff like that. Metaverse hype has died off a lot. Um, but when you see Otherverse, when you actually look at this platform, it is 1,000 times better than Decentraland. Yeah. This has been in, in uh, development for over a decade from some of the godfathers of the internet. There's real people on there, real platforms. They've got all the patents to make this not only the best metaverse, but like socialify events, concerts, like everything. The next generation of the internet is what they're building, right? And the current market cap is under 20 million, right? It's crazy. Now, again, this is one of those ones with a large, fully diluted valuation because a small amount of tokens are in circulation, but that is because the UTHX token is integral to the game economy or the metaverse economy. It's, it's the in-game currency, so it's slowly released over time to you know actually fund the world. So again, it's not like there's just all these tokens unlocking to VCs to dump on you. So it's a bit of an interesting valuation. You don't get scared off by the fully diluted. But no. for me, when I see a market cap so small and a platform so legit, and Brian has built, they had multi-billion dollars transactions going through the Web 2 version of Otherverse with like weddings and events and concerts alone. Um, honestly, I don't think it's going to get to 10 billion this cycle unless Metaverse and SocialFi really start to trend. But I'm going to set my targets at similar to like Block Asset and Axe and Dow. I think 50 to 100x, one to two billion dollar market cap for other versus this cycle. I think when they get their stuff going, it's going to be unstoppable. Yeah, I'm looking at a 40x, which would put it around thirty nine dollars. <throat> I see JP Morgan, Citibank, all these guys, all these big banks saying that the metaverse is the next trillion dollar opportunity. Okay, well if it's the next trillion dollar opportunity, who holds the patents to everything metaverse related? The other verse does. Mm -hmm. They hold over a hundred different patents. Look what's happening with Epic Games. This little tiny market cap company in the other verse is taking down Epic Games yep. because of uh, patent infringement. So to me, that just says all other verses, all other metaverses that try to do anything in this space are going to have to go through the other verses technology. Yep. They're going to have to. Like you said, they did over uh, thir they had 38 billion transactions worth $15 billion in US dollars in their uh, Otherverse Classic. Mm -hmm. They had 50 million users in Otherverse Classic. There's only 2,000 holders right now. Yep. So at some point, these 50 million Otherverse Classic users are going to end up coming over and becoming holders of the UTHX token. Yep. I think this is an easy, like I said, 40X, bring it to $40. For sure. Yeah, this is an absolute gem. All right, so we've got two more AI coins to talk about. Then we have a small cap bonus coin to make some price predictions on. So if you're watching right now, keep watching until the end because there's some really interesting info about to be dropped. So one of the things I, I tweeted about this lately or uh, recently about most of the coins that we hold that we love and talk about, there, a lot of them are new coins, right? Because with each bull run comes new coins and new hypes and new metas and all that kind of stuff. And you don't really want to be holding your money in dead coins. But there is one coin that we hold and that we love that actually does have a lot of data because it was launched a long time ago, and that's a ride chain, right? So a ride chain, current price about six dollars, market cap around eighty five mil, ranked in the four hundreds. Now we have data on this from the previous cycle. The previous all time high was seventy dollars, mm. right? So that's a twelve x from here. Um, a ride chain is one of the most slept on AI coins in the in the industry, maybe because it is I don't know, like oh it's older, but this is absolutely legit. It's a native AI layer one, huge tailwind from the AI sector. They're building so so many different things with integrations with other chains, AI DeFi, all kinds of AI uh, AI proofs. Um, I think based on last cycle's numbers, or I chain probably deserves to be the top two hundred. I think it's going to get back to its all time high, so that's going to represent a twelve x from here back to around a one billion dollar market cap. That's what I think. Okay, well, I started to look at AI companies on the stock market and to see, you know, are they generating revenue, all these things. So, Accenture AI market cap of one billion dollars. 
revenue, four million. Net income, minus 36 mil. Mm -hmm. Zero cash on hand. I look at C3 AI. This is a market cap of 3.6 billion. So I kind of almost look at more close to this. Their revenue is 87 mil. I know that Ori Chain has 60 in-house devs. I know they're coming with a plethora of different dApps to be able to utilize in the world of DeFi. They have GPU staking, uh, AI verifiable, trustworthy proofs, all these things. So to me, I put out a target of 41x from here. I like it. Very bullish. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. Okay, let's go move on to another AI coin, one that we've kind of just started talking about a little more recently and actually been on a quite a nice run since we started talking about it. Who would have thought? A world coin. Mm. So world coin is an interesting one. People have conflicting views on it because it is kind of tied to Sam Altman and open AI and, and all that kind of stuff. But that is one of the reasons why it's like everyone hates it. So I kind of love it. You know what I mean? Like as it's, it's going to be one of those most hated rallies. Everyone's like, oh, this is centralized VC garbage. And they're going to cry and cry and cry as it keeps going up and up and up. Um, I think this is an open AI, open AI be chat GPT beta play. Like when world when they come up with good news, when Sam Altman comes up with good news, people are gonna buy WorldCoin just because they know it. The name is tied to it. It's in the news. It's like non crypto people know about WorldCoin because of Sam Altman, right? And I like that easy exposure. So right now, current price is two fifty, market cap of one point three billion dollars. It's ranked just outside the top fifty, just because it is so well known. Sam Altman, OpenAI, all that kind of stuff. I think this has massive potential. This thing already has an all time high of ten dollars when it launched, like not that long ago. Um, I think it surpasses that easily. I think it can sniff the top 25 here. I'm going to say easy $10 billion market cap, which is a 15 to 20x target. Conservatively, $25 target. I think super bullish target for WorldCoin for me is a $50 per coin target at a $25 billion market cap. I'm uh, sorry. I have a price of $54, uh, so like a 20x or so from here. Yep. Um, same thing. I just see only 7 million people have got their irises scanned so far through the WorldCoin orb. Um, but with the recent chat GPT integration into the iOS software, I can see the world coin orb expanded into the Apple unlock feature, mm. which is then going to scan the 1.4 billion users of, of iPhone users out there. So that's for me, like how, what I was looking at. I think more people are going to be forced to use this <laughs> thing. If you want to use the iPhone, you're going to have to use this. My world coin. Yeah. That's what, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's going to be the most hated rally, man. Everyone's going to hate WorldCoin. It's going to go up and up and up. And they're going to buy the top and I'm going to dump on them. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, too funny. All right, let's go to our bonus pick here. So this is a really interesting one because it just launched very recently. And that's WellShare Health. Yeah. So this is a tough one to predict because it did just launch. There's not a lot of data on it. It launched at a tiny $1 million market cap. And launch day, there were some fireworks, right? So I think it's just an easy comparison here to the DeSci sector, to the AI DeSci sector, Axe and Dow. So we had price targets for Axe and Dow in the one to two to three to four to five billion range. Uh, Wellshare is similar, not the same as Axe and Dow, but it's similar. Um, I think for me, there's not that many legitimate DeSci projects. So if DeSci does start to trend, you know, we've seen potential interest from CZ and Binance. We've seen potential interest from Novo Nordisk with Wellshare, Pfizer, Coinbase. There's all these... Big firms circling in D-size, circling Wellshare, circling Axendow. So for me, yeah, I think Wellshare, probably full bull. I think it deserves to be above $500 million market cap. Can it reach $1 billion? I don't think that's too crazy. Yeah, I'm on the same thing with you. I mean, it's when you look at the, the DAP and how simple it is to be sharing your data, you're rewarding well tokens, contributing to decentralized science, scientific research. Like, I don't know how you can not get on board with that. And like you said, with the Novo Nordisk, potential partnership that occurs. Yep. You know, just look at some of the other D-side projects out there. You know, um, VitaDAO, that's six, like 60 mil, mm -hmm. and some of the other ones. Like, there's no reason why this can't be at least half of what Axon Dow's uh, market cap is. Yeah, so if things start to go real crazy, I think you're going to see Wellshare do very, very well. So, hey, look, if there's any other coins that you really like, that you hold, that you want us to make a price prediction for, let us know in the comments. And if we get enough of them, maybe we'll do crypto price predictions part two. Or let us know your price prediction for the coins we just did. Ooh, yeah, see, see if, did we do good or did we do bad? Yeah, and then tune into the next episode. Ooh, that one's going to be a banger. All views expressed by speakers on the Bean Pod are solely their opinions. You should not treat any opinion expressed on the Bean Pod as a specific inducement to make a particular investment or follow a specific strategy, but only as an expression of their opinion. This podcast is for informational purposes only.